Hello there, welcome to One on One. My name is Bridget Otu. Today on One on One, we are in the Ashanti region, one of the rare seats that the NDC has managed to win consistently for five times. And that's because the candidate uh, who is called the landlord in the Ashanti region perhaps will share some of the secrets to how he manages to win <laughs> the Aswasi constituency over and over and over again. A five time MP, my guest, Al Haji Mohammed. Mubarak Muntaka, welcome mm. to One and One. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, uh, I, I, I want to start with a young man who yeah. unfortunately died in uh, mm. police custody. I heard the uh, minister, interior minister Ambrose Derry say he had hit his head. When you heard him say that, what did you think of that remark? That okay, autopsy says he hit his head. Well, I mean, let me thank you sincerely for coming to my office and. I was shocked and I didn't miss words on the floor of parliament. I told the minister that, well, even though he himself acknowledged that that was what was being alleged by the police. And I said that, how can he link the autopsy to what they are saying? Because if someone runs and crashes himself into a wall, the, the, the most suspicious place to expect a crash will either be the chest or the head, <laughs> not the abdomen and the spleen. I mean, so you could see a mismatch completely. It's sad that the way the police, sometimes when they are entering the Zongo community, the mindset with which they go, I, I, I find it very, very unfortunate. What mindset do you think they go well, there with? They, 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 I mean, I've seen incidents in many communities. I mean, remember, we are not living in isolation. We are in a region where there are other communities, neighboring communities. And we see how sometimes when the police are entering those communities, the way they behave, and when they are coming into our community, the way they behave. I don't know for whatever reason, there seems to be this mindset that we are some kind of uh, iron guys that are there, some kind of uh, subhuman beings mm -hmm. that are there. That's how we see it. We may be wrong, but that's how we see how we are being perceived. Because when they come into our community, the brutality is... Um, um, unimaginable. Right. We all know police, when they hear suspicion of criminal activities around a place, will always carry a soup. And when they do this soup, even if you remember a parliament around the place, it may affect you. Mm -hmm. But the way they do it, they do it in a very decent way because they know that in a soup, a lot of innocent people could okay. be caught up within the right. net. So right. they will just ensure that they effect arrests. That's what I am telling someone that we need to come back to this law of saying the police can use minimal force and define mm -hmm. the minimal force. Right. Yes, they are supposed to use some minimal force to gather the people. Then they do the filtering, let go those that they genuinely believe are, are just caught up within the area. Mm -hmm. And then those that they suspect may be criminal, then they interrogate them. But each time they go into our community, their brutality is always unmeasured. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that I have lost count how many times I have to come to the parliament to raise these concerns. And most of the time, when I even have to come, it is as a result of somebody dying, mm. which is most of all. For those that happen, then people get brutalized, they just get hurt. It's uncountable. But anytime I have to come to the floor, it is because some people have lost uh, their, their, their life. And the case of this Yusuf Salahuddin, very, very unfortunate. Yeah. In fact, he was painting, they were painting his room. He was preparing to get mm. married. Then a Sunday evening, the council, the young boys were playing football. He was standing there. He just saw people running. Mm. And like we are in this room. If all of a sudden my secretary runs in here and start oh, running, I don't think yeah. you and I are going to be asking, why are you running? We'll yeah. just start running and yeah. follow her. Without knowing What's what it? actually, yeah. because we just have to run to yeah. maybe a safe place before you start asking, mm. why, why are we running? Unfortunately, because he didn't even know what was happening, he ran into the police. Mm. So the expectations are fine. You arrest get to the station, do the screening, and then you let go of those that you believe are not done. Yeah. But they started brutalizing him, according to the bystanders. Mm. They started hitting him, stepping on him and all that. Then when he fainted and he was lying there, I thought that as a responsible police institution or police officers, they would rush him to the hospital. Because even, let's assume, the person is even an armed robber on the crime scene, and you realize the person is dying. You need you to save, save the life yeah. and then let the person face the, 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 the consequences of right. his crime. Right. Now they abandon him, but because they were within the scene shooting, wire, firing shots, at, nobody could go near mm -hmm. until when they left the place, when now families and friends could get closer. By that time, 
It was too late. Before they got to the hospital, the guy was pronounced dead. Mm. And now you see their what the account, what their the account that they are giving the, the, the minister. I have told the minister, I have no doubt about his credibility, but mm. I have every reason to have to have doubt on the credibility of the police because of the credibility gap they've created in the past, like I said. I mean, as an MP, it will put you in a very difficult situation. Very. So in such a case, what do you tell your constituents? How do you calm them down? How do you assure them that you will seek justice to ensure that they are treated fairly? Well, I must say, to a like very large extent, I, I'm always grateful to my people. When it comes to this very difficult moment, they always believe that I'll rise to the occasion. I mean, you've seen me make statement on the floor. It's brought, I brought the whole matter to the attention of the whole country. So they, they, they see the effort that I'm making, even though they also appreciate my limitation. I mean, a number of times, like I started one incident about how the Usman brutally killed in police mm -hmm. source. I brought the matter, the police gave the assurance, they were investigating. To date, over four or five years, we had nothing. Mm. I filed several questions, the Minister of Council, they are still on me. In the case of the Zongo seven, the seven young guys who mm. were killed, right. when I insisted that no, we should not leave this investigation to the police, and everybody agreed and government set up that committee, we saw the difference. Mm. In the case of that one, that was not left to the police. There was proper investigation. I was led by a high court judge. Proper report came. They were able to establish that these young men were not armed robbers. They were also able to establish that the police did wrong, and therefore request, uh, I mean, recommended compensation, which the family had been since uh, what you call it, uh, uh, compensated. But the last bit, which is to fish out the murderers. You see, my sister, one of the worrying things that is drawing all of us back, is that the police are not angels. The police are not coming from the sky, just like you and I. In your station as Metro TV, you may have some bad nuts. It's like everywhere. In Parliament, you have some bad nuts. In every society, you may have some bad nuts. What the society does is that when those bad nuts misbehave, you fish them out. All right. Then it becomes a caution for me and you who may be thinking to do some of the things that they will. Then I know that uh, in Parliament, uh, if I misbehave, I'll go to privileges and this will happen. You know in your workplace, in Metro, if you do cross the red line, there will be consequences. You could even lose your job. Sure. So everybody then watches his or her steps. But if you allow the police, they go and kill and then they cover it up. Mm. Why would the next police officer be more careful? He will simply do the same because even when he kills, all what will happen was that we'll talk, 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 and then it ends. So but then, do you see it aggravating? I think it's, it keeps going up. Or it, I keeps, seen it's, it's, it keeps going up. Right. And that's where my worry is. And mm. uh, I'm calling there on the IGP. Have you engaged IGP himself personally? Have you had uh, it? To be honest, no. Okay. Because I've been dealing with my colleague, the minister. Okay. Uh, right. I, I, I thought that I wouldn't want to jump the gun. Right. So I'll be dealing with the minister. It becomes very necessary. I mean... The, the COP strike is also from my community. Okay. Uh -huh. I mean, who is now in charge of operation in the whole country. They may have to look at their, uh, what do you call it, their training manual. Mm. Because you see, there are biases. All of us here have our biases. Mm. I mean, I sure. may have my bias towards some people. I may have some my bias towards certain culture. I may have mm. my bias certain, against certain religion. But in the training, you should be able to train me to rise above my biases. So each time I'm acting, I, I try to put myself above my biases. I, I, I consciously know that I have this bias towards a brigade, mm -hmm. but in dealing with her, I should be conscious not to cross this line. If we don't do that, and you leave me with my biases, maybe can't the interview with a greater respect, the way maybe mm -hmm. I'm behaving towards you, maybe different from if it's another person. Right. And that may not be fair. So is it a training? I think that they need to look at that. So because, they are see, biased towards the community. The Zongo communities. You, you and come, yeah. It's across the country. And look, just listen to any time there's some riot and there are deaths. Mm. Listen to the names. Mm. And it's that the Zongo community across the country is beginning to realize that, no, this is how we are being perceived. And this is how we are being brutalized. And nobody seems to be concerned and worried about what's happening to us. If it's other persons or other communities, we see the comment from the general public. If it is us, 
It's like, oh, these are subhuman beings or something. That's how we feel. But it, Our it, feeling it, may be wrong, okay. but that's how we feel. And my worry is like, what happened in the last, this used to allow this incident? Yeah, I was born and bred in Aswansi. Yeah. I have lived all my life, apart from maybe traveling to go somewhere and come back up to date, I continue to live in, the, in that community. It has never mm. been said that we mobilized to go and attack police. It has never happened over five decades of my life. I have never heard this, but for the first time, this is happening. And that's a danger which mm -hmm. you watch. Because if young men in Aswans could gather to go and attack a police station, mm -hmm. we are heading towards a danger. Because it looks like, look, they are being pushed to the wall and they are beginning to push back. And I, my prayer is that, that's where I keep uh, pleading. And we, you know, in our community, we have a structure that if you know the structure very well, you're able to deal with difficulties. The imams, the opinion leaders, and because you are in constant touch with them, I mean, this guru area, I know almost all the imams that are there, all the opinion leaders. So the moment these things happen, you quickly call, and then during their uh, prayer, their five-day prayers, they try to calm the youth. Mm -hmm. And then you have some of the youth leaders that you talk to, that look, yes, what happened is wrong. These are the effort that I'm making. Mm -hmm. Just watch what I'm doing. But please, let's not do another wrong thing to correct a wrong. We can't get two wrongs. Two have wrongs you, doesn't make a right. Have you personally engaged the family? Yes, in... I've sent people myself because mm -hmm. of the busy. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm living for Kumasi. Okay. And uh, definitely the man I'm there, I'll, I'll be at the family. Because of the way we were busy, last week we had so many from I couldn't go. But I've, I've spoken to them. I've sent uh, my reps there. And I'm also told the police have visited them. The IGP has spoken to the, the family. So we are hoping that we'll continue to manage the, the, the community so that we do not have these excesses. Okay. You were extremely uh, vocal about the NDC leadership uh, change. Mm. Um, I see you have a picture with the mm. former president, John mm. Mohammed, in your office. Yes. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on, you know, uh, as a former mi minority chief whip, yeah. um, what do you make of the current leadership so far, their performance? Well, uh, to some extent, I'll say it's too early. So, okay. I mean, one of the things that I keep telling people is that you may not like people. You may have your reservation. You may have your biases. Mm. But uh, as a, as a, as a, some, somebody with faith, at all times, you need to be fair to people. And to be fair, it is too early to really uh, judge their performance. I mean, they are barely one year in office. Yes, and when you come into office, you come to meet so many other challenges. Yes, mm. they've been able to organize uh, the uh, presidential primaries. They've right. done the parliamentary primaries. Uh, in I didn't primaries. see you in Austin, North, though. I was. You were there? We were there, oh, we were okay. there, we were okay. there heavily. Myself and Honorable Harun, I did okay. And uh, we've done Asino, we've done Kumawu. Right. Yeah, you, you look at all those things, you see gaps. But because they are the new leaders, you need to uh, give them the benefit of the doubt. What, what then, gaps then, did you identify? Well, I mean, in the case of the primaries, mm -hmm. especially that of the parliamentary primaries, right. you have so many national officers having interest and in poking their nose and hands into uh, various consensus. I'm sure mm -hmm. if you talk to the 130 seven MPs that went to primaries. You hear all manner of stories of one national officer doing that or doing that. I thought that they didn't behave well mm -hmm. uh, in managing that because mm -hmm. you need to be able to get all of you. But unfortunately, you have almost all of them, I mean, doing that. So it becomes difficult for one to say, can you all stay off as we've seen sometime in the past? This didn't really happen. But mm -hmm. all in all, I mean, if you say we should put on a scale of one to 10, you won't say that they, they, they did more than uh, five. Mm. So, so that's average. That's, yeah, that's, 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 that's not impressive. Yeah, that's average. Uh, but if you look at the number of yeah. even MPs that lost their seats, mm. I, I, I thought that as we, we grow into this, uh, this democratization, we need to, as a party, need to have a system that keeps experience. Because you see, the bottom line is that people go around, they will tell all manner of lies, they say all manner of things. It keeps hunting the party because mm. you see, if you come to Aswansi and you unseat me with lies, mm. it only takes four years uh, to catch up with you. Mm. Because they are going to measure you with the same lies. And you fail. And then before you realize that the party will lose the, 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 the seat. And I've seen that severally happening in many, many concerts. Clearly, it didn't work. You well, won your seats. You were very furious about yeah, that. Yeah, it yeah. didn't work. Yes. Why do you but think no, that I'm they I'm talking failed? about those, I mean, in consensus, 
across the country. Mm -hmm. If you you have a party and you just sit and allow people to just say anything, all the lies, and you just watch, and it's like, oh, there's nothing you can do. It's people who are campaigning. The sad thing is that some of them, that's so when the national officer, when they were campaigning, they had to tell lies on so many other people. <laughs> I mean, to, to, to win their seat. Then the lies are catching up with them too. So it's like they, they, are, they are constrained in trying to tell people that, no, you can't say that because that is a lie. Okay. If someone, for example... Oh, so you uh, want the party to be able to, to call people yes, out? Yes, because to you them. hear people, what people are saying. I want to come and contest Brigitte. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that when I come, I'll take uh, 200 people abroad. Mm. And the party you hear, they say, you don't say anything. What are you expecting? You hear people say that, oh, me, when I come, all of you, I'm going to give you motorbikes. And you see there are 2,000 people around. And the party doesn't say anything. You hear people say that, oh, me, when I come, the common fund, I'm going to give it to all the party executives. And the party doesn't say anything. What are you expecting? That we run away from your responsibility. Because you know, as a party, that all the things that the people are saying are not possible. But you know, but you are quiet, saying that, oh, they are just campaigning. What? Are you leaving the party with? Because you see, there's one thing winning primaries and another thing winning the main election. If you allow people to use lies to win primaries, definitely they'll control into the main election. Yeah. So they may win it for the first time. That's why you see a lot of our seats swings. And you see sometimes the turnover is so high. Yeah. I mean, this, when I came to this house first, the number of seats were 230. And at a point in time, we were just, yeah, 230. No, 200 mm. first, 200. Before you went to, I when think I first came, President, okay. President, right. President Kufo, okay. we were 200. Okay. And the NDC had this about 90, mm. about 90, is it 92 or 91? Right. The following election, when it was moved to 230, the NDC moved to about 96 or so. Mm. Okay, I get you. Then the following election, all of a sudden, we moved to 118 mm. and MPP moved to 112. Mm. Then another election, we moved to, we increased the consensus to 275. Right. And then we moved to 154 and MPP 121. Mm. Then one cycle, MPP moved to 169 and we came down 101. to 106. 106 right. Then now you have 137, 137. Mm. What it is telling you is that you are gradually having Consequences that just move in drums. Mm. And that is danger for our democracy. People sometimes don't, don't really see it. But what is it that makes some consequences so unstable? You go and check some, under, what, some people would say it's because they are enlightened. No. You go and check down the line and current. They lies. Mm. Because I lied to come and take you off. Right. So you see it. And then the lies catch up. Okay. It catches up with me. Because maybe he is also coming to make another lie. <laughs> I have it. And my people have some saying, the other people have some saying, that when you see people keep long in a position, it is because they are largely truthful. Okay. Mm. And how do they say it? That Ajima and I say the guess, yeah. I mean, to see people keep long doing one thing and staying for long. It is largely because they are truthful. Okay. So you see, that's when you watch. You see some consequences are very difficult. Like I saw, I see. And sometimes people just don't understand. What is it that has made it possible just for all these difficulties? You keep winning the seats. I'm not an angel. Yeah. I have my own uh, shortfalls. I have my weaknesses. But I can bet you largely you are being truthful to the people. Okay. And you are being sincere. And they see it. You know, you can feel even when your father is doing his best, even though he's not solving all your problems. You can feel it. You can also see it, even though when he's lavishly giving you everything, and you know that he's not doing well, you can feel it. Okay. It's, it's in the house. You can feel that your mother is not doing well in keeping this home, yeah. even though she may be putting food on the table. You can see that she may be able to put only one meal on the table, but you can sincerely see that she's doing her very best. Yeah. That is the difference. Okay. doing your very best and being sincere and honest to the people that you represent. Is this view something you have shared with a party? Um, are you able to connect with them? I mean, do you, for instance, I'm interested, what's your relationship like with the chair? Mm. I see you didn't for instance. Uh, what's your relationship well, I mean, with? you see, party positions are, are, are things that brings people together. I mean, you may have your differences, you may have your biases, but you must learn to work together. 
I mean, when I was in the leadership, I was seven almost in all the party leadership positions. Right. And I want to believe that many may, may not like my style. Maybe many may, may, may have reservation about how uh, I put my, 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 my facts so blunt. And sometimes you, you may step on people's toe, but the truth is one. Because, I mean, with the greater respect, when I'm very experienced about something, and I know that you don't have that experience, <laughs> and you think that we should do it the way you think, I should be able to point out that, look, the way you are thinking, it cannot be done because of ABCD. Or sometimes it brings disagreement. But the bottom line is that when you are in a group, you must learn to work together. You don't have to be friends. You don't have to like each other to work mm -hmm. together. You have a, a common objective, and you should work towards that objective. Mm -hmm. It mustn't be that, I mean, with the greater respect, maybe a very bad example, We've agreed to do this interview. Yes. I mustn't like you. you right. know, I mustn't be friends before we agree to do this. <laughs> I mean, we if we are friends, fine. It may make it more lively. Right. But if we are not friends, once we agree to the to the to the to the the, the, the terms, right. we should be able to grant the, a, and have a very beautiful interview mm -hmm. without having any hiccup, right? So that's how it should be. So it's not about what, what do you like, whether you like this person, whether you and this person uh, they, you, you meet every day or. It's an objective, and the objective is that our party should be able to get out of its difficulty okay. and win the be next election. Be before I move away and talk about Cecilia uh, Dapa's issue and scandals that have um, uh, plagued this government, and vis a vis scandals that you know uh, uh, have plagued you know the, the Eswal administration, I wanted to find out if today you have been told the reasons for your removal because you said you had not been told reasons why you know the party wanted you out. Well, I thought that. Uh, well, uh, man, I, I keep telling people that you cannot control crying over spilled milk. Right, I mean, when right. something passes, you let it go. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the essence of life. I mean, I always tell people that's why the rear driving rear mirrors are small, mm -hmm. and then the the, the 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 driving mirror is big, because looking forward is more important than looking back. Yes, sometimes you have to look back to guide you, but you had all the excuses say one thing then there's pressure then they send their mouth and say well it's because of this up to now they themselves i'm not sure if they themselves are very certain why they, 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 so they, they just and wanted change me, and they didn't for, know how to go for, about and it for me it's something that's passed and okay you, I, I don't spend time looking at, at my back i just okay. keep looking forward with a lot of hope and praying that the good lord i always tell myself once i wake up every morning the Lord is not done with me. <laughs> well, what do you, what do you miss me. about being a minority chief? Well, I mean, well, I'm wondering, what did they come with? Like, honestly, what, what do you miss honestly, about being the honestly, minority chief? To be, to be very frank with you, yeah. I didn't even know that we were killing ourselves. Ah. I feel relaxed now. I mean, maybe you can see it on my face. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm able to do so many other things. Right. I spend more time with the family. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, uh, I've taken the opportunity to even uh, offer myself to, to teach. Uh, the next generation mm -hmm. of our country in uh, university uh, master class, and oh, I'm okay. doing it, and it's relaxing, more relaxing than where, early where, where morning. Are you I'm at UPSC. Oh, okay, uh -huh. uh, this early morning meeting, <laughs> late meeting, all that is no longer an issue. And I'm not also a spectator, so <laughs> you sit in the bus and you can snore because somebody is <laughs> not driving. Right. Yeah, but what do you miss? Maybe it's too early, but to be very frank with you. I don't seem to miss anything mm. because I'm still representing my people. Mm. I realize that a lot of stress I've taken, I've been taking off back me. I mean, this uh, unnecessary confrontation because sometimes when this 137 came, it's been a hell for us in leadership mm. because the expectation is beyond measure. People's uh, anticipation of what could happen mm. without even knowing the standing orders and the constitution of our country, mm. for me, is unbelievable. Maybe, and they thought that we were the program. Now we are off, and they, you still have the program because the reality is that there are certain things you cannot do in a democratic chamber like our parliament right. with your number 137 when the other side is 138. Yeah. I mean, that, and I always tell people, look, a democracy, that doesn't give a window for people to talk. It's not a democracy. Right. And when people misunderstood talking to mean that people are weak or people are compromised, well, today, I don't know what they are saying. We give our best. We give our best. I believe myself and Hanabu Haruna and Dusu Averji, we give our best. And we are very proud of it because I believe anybody who is very sincere to himself or herself watching this house today 
we acknowledge that we did our best. Okay. And we take pride in that. Right. We'll, we'll talk about um, your role in the 2024 elections, uh, especially in Ashanti region. Uh, but I want to move to this scandal that has you know dominated the headlines uh, for weeks now, involving the former Minister of mm. Sanitation and Water Resources, Madam Cecilia Dapam. The Attorney General has advised on the taking over a case, and I've heard people say, okay, why would Attorney General take over mm. the case uh, when the special prosecutor is investigating yeah. it? But I want to talk about the scandal itself. As a, an MP, when you first heard that a minister had this much in there, uh, in their home, you know, a million dollars, there's 300,000 euros, what was your first impression? What Honestly, was your first impression? Very, very fine. And this is one I, that I, I didn't believe. I thought it was the usual oh. uh, thing that we do to each other. We just mm. tell lies and escalate them, exaggerate them, until someone was showing me uh, a court document. And I said, ah, are you really sure? Is it not maybe? You know, now with the artificial intelligence, <laughs> there's nothing. Even this you and I interview can, can, can be redone in a way that, yes, we'll right. be seen talking, right. but the, the voice is being overrun. Mm -hmm. That is completely different from this actual interview. Now with artificial intelligence, people mm -hmm. can do it. Mm -hmm. So I still had my doubt that I don't think this can be true. Mm -hmm. Because to be very frank and honest with you, Honorable Steel, the power of Former colleague, remember she was she represented back to mine, we were all in this chamber. Right. I call him mother. I mean, because we, we were all in the same Asante Cocos. Right. And uh, we respect each other very much. When she comes to this house, to be very frank with you, the complaints about oh sometimes her committee complains, oh there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. So with all there's this there's nothing, and then there's this in your house. <laughs> it looks right. contradictory for me. Mm. Frankly speaking, I keep seeing things changing. Even yesterday, I saw some document that they said the Attorney General's response is yes. it factual? I don't know. Because of this same uh, artificial intelligence, I still don't know whether they are factual. You see some uh, description of only 200,000 is hers, 800,000 is for brother or something. Is it's it $10,000, yes. I, yeah. I, I don't know whether they are right. factual response from yes. the Yes, yes. If they are, all this is worrying for me because why do we keep such large chunk of money in the house? Wow. Yeah. Let's assume without admitting that these monies are genuinely mm -hmm. and sincerely acquired. What if the house got bent? Mm. What if Am Roberts came into the house? What if, what if, what if? I mean, is it not safer in a bank? Is it not safer if it's a, a general resources? Why, why, why must it be in the house? Let me admit, a lot of the people who are screaming and saying, oh, hey, this is this, <laughs> you'll be shocked that they are equally keeping the same kind of monies in their homes. Because I was asking a friend, if someone comes to give you a gift now, where will you keep it? When you, when you say people are shouting, you mean MPs and, and ministers? Or yes, I'm saying that. So, when people give you a gift, where do you keep it? Mm. Say home. Ah, because you and I, maybe the gift you get is no more than 5000 and 2000 and <laughs> Do you go to double sit in the bank? Mm. So, if someone is collecting a bribe of one million, remember, maybe a bad, bad example. Remember during President Kufour when a then local government minister Charles Bentin was seen in a bank with one billion, like <laughs> 300,000, going to yeah. deposit that money. It became a, an issue. Yeah. I remember. I guess. And <laughs> I think it led to his reshuffle or something. 100,000 of today, that yeah. time it was one billion. Yeah. So if someone goes to give somebody a bribe of one million Ghana cities, mm -hmm. will he courageously carry that one million Ghana cities and go and deposit in his bank account? Mm -hmm. He'll be keeping it in the house. So if people are taking bribes and taking kickbacks and other things, you can be sure that they are keeping it in their homes. But okay. today everybody is just screaming and talking as if you see that's the hypocrisy of in, in, in our country. That is the biggest hypocrisy. And you see, one of the things that I've noticed is that, and I'm sad to say this, that we are living in a country where it's virtually becoming like I'm criticizing Brigitte is because I'm not sitting on a seat. Mm. Because I'm looking at the opportunity that is there and wishing that it is coming rather to me. Mm. So my criticism of you. It's not genuine because maybe what you are doing, I sincerely believe is wrong and I will have done it differently. Then when I sit on your seat, I may be doing worse than you are doing. 
That's what you see us do. And I, I'm saying this with all sincerity and I mean with all humility. Look, I was in this house since President Kofor, but I saw how President Kofor group criticized President Rawlings. Right. Corruption, corruption, corruption. Then President Kofor came. Then we, you remember the slogan? Wow, wow, wow. 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 Kufu, kind of wow, wow, yes, wow. Yeah. And then the then Atamas uh, group, that's us, kept talking about corruption and corruption. You remember the Chadanani and all that? Yes. Like that. Then, For my health. Yeah. when we came, then the same, another, the MPP group starts, NDC corrupt, 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 Mahama, this, that, that. And today, look, the same NDC group that were being accused of corruption during Mahama and uh, Mel's time are now accusing this. So it looks like it's just a kind of chase game. Mm. Is there like an opportunity? You get up when I also sit, then I also do but what I can. But that's a big in but, indictment on the members of parliament. And no, it's on, the, that's not on that the political class. On the political class. So yes, we'll, we'll hold on there. We, we'll take a break. Um, mm. I would want to stay on the subject. So uh, I, I heard um, Dr. Randy Abbas say that you know, the political class you know, will be the death of the country. And it's interesting that um, uh, Al Haji uh, Mubarak Muntaka mentioned it. So, after the break, I'll talk about his own experience of how the country crucified him for spending what they call state resources. It was about $20,000 then. But today, what do we see? Are we crying as much as we did when he was in broad? And how does he personally feel about it? We'll be back to talk about that. Right, welcome back to One on One. My guest is Al Haji Mohammed Mubarak Muntaka, a member of parliament for Aswasi constituency, five time member of parliament. He's got a lot of experience and, uh, and he's yet to tell us, you know, what the secret is. He hasn't told us yet what the secret is. Oh, perhaps he said one. He talks about the fact that, you know, if you are consistent or largely truthful, uh, persons or voters would stay with you so maybe that's one one of the secrets uh, but before the break we were talking about how the the role of the political class in ensuring that uh one persons we vote for are held accountable for their actions and then uh also the hypocrisy that as we associate with persons who shout and do worse when given the opportunity i'm sure you would say that's what the npp is doing <laughs> now but um yeah the political class will be uh to quote you know dr randy abbey will be the death of this country a statement well, like it's that. Not, not necessarily. It's the people okay. that are really creating the death of the country. Remember, Brigitte, nice presenter, nice journalist. You are doing your very best. Why is it that when you just join the politics and before you realize you'll be also categorized to be among the same group? Mm. We are coming from the larger population. We are not coming from the sky. We are not coming. The politicians are not just being brought from some kind of different continent to come. And therefore, we are different in upbringing, upbringing. We are different from mm -hmm. the society. We are just coming largely from the society. And I keep saying, so long as we don't reform our political party system, how we elect both the national and constituency, all the party executives, how we elect parliamentary candidates, how we finance our campaign, mm -hmm. forget it. Mm -hmm. Just forget it. I mean, I have lived it. I came into a time where you didn't need money to become a candidate. Mm. And God is my witness. My first coming to this house, one, I didn't, first, I didn't even want to come. I was virtually mm. being begged to come. Mm. So there was nothing like to go and pay people money to come because I was being begged to come. Then along the line, then it became that, oh, you have to try and give us some TNT and then mm. some lunch. So oh, it's reasonable because the person is leaving his thing job to come and, and, and witness the voting and this thing. Right. They should be able to eat and drink. So let's buy food. And then when they are going, we'll look at we in my country, we haven't paying different things. We'll look at those of you in the same area where we are holding the thing, we don't give anything. Those who are coming a little distance, that time you may give uh, five cities. Mm -hmm. And those far ten cities. The maximum maybe about twenty cities. Then it now moved into now people started giving people uh, phones. And then it moved into uh, fridges, then on and on. And now you are hearing these volumes of money that you have to pay. Mm. I won't sit here and lie to you. I have never gone into a premise that was so expensive than the one that just finished. Mm. And I'm asking myself, 
that first is it worth it? Mm. I remember very well when this Hula Balu changes in leadership and all that, and I said, well, I've, I've paid my dues to my party, I've paid my dues to my constituency. Why not just walk away? All the people are like, no, 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 no. I remember one of my younger brother, who is a senior lecturer in Kenya University, Dr. Samet said, if you have to quit, you have to quit at your own terms, not at people's mm. terms. Mm. People cannot deliberately create impediments to remove you, and you sit down and allow that. What are you telling your children? What are you telling we, your younger brothers? that you give up when it is most tough. So fine, so we have to battle it. Now in battling it, we have to money that battle. it is about, you just have to battle with money. And everybody was watching. How much this is you spend? Do you know how much no, you spend? No, I mean, we are sitting on the national TV. Um, it's not something that I can sit down because a lot of people have contributed in diverse ways. Right. I mean, some of them, I, I, I got to hear, I got to know about them even after the primary. No, oh, they, 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 they pay, okay, on your behalf, right, right. I'm like, what? Say, yes, this person, I have to do this. Say, hey. So, and when you try to put all together, and you ask yourself, all those guys who have done one thing or the other on my behalf, what would be the expectation? Mm -hmm. What would be the expectation of me? Of you, yeah. The parties do not collect dues from their members. You see the look at the MPP presidential primaries going around. Look at mm -hmm. the money that they are spending. Yeah. Who and who are financing it? You think they are for the Christmas? When you see the presidential campaign going and you see the billboards, you see the spending, you see the t-shirt, you see the all the things that are being done, you think they are for the Christmas? You are joking. It is you, the audience, who have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, now I'm get I got to know some other people have done a lot of things on my behalf. So I sit in this house, and let's assume the person brings a business. And I think that generally, this business should not cost more than, it shouldn't cost this country more than, say, 10 million. Mm. But he has up to 50 million. What would be my courage to insist that they should? Ethically, I should, I should be courageous should, enough right. to say, yeah, even though he supported me, bring it. But please, no. This thing, my check is that it shouldn't be more than 10 million. Mm. How many people can do that? Let's be sincere with ourselves. Mm. Let's stop this hypocrisy and lies. You have political parties, nobody knows how they, they mobilize money to, to, to run the campaigns. Because their members are not paying the, the dues. If you go and check how many members are paying the dues, those are pitants. So if you do this, and then you run a campaign and win, those who had spent millions in supporting the party, you think they'll just fold their arms? They just do it because they like NDC or they like MPP? No. They expect or they want to, to throw money away. And that's yeah. where the beginning you know, of the difficulty comes. So you see, genuinely, you may have a president who is very sincere and genuine. But how you got there, certain things he has to gloss over it. Mm. You see very sincere and hardworking MP. Certain things come to their committee, they have to gloss over it. You see very sincere and honest MP, uh, ministers. Certain things come to their office and they have to gloss over it. And they, sometimes they do it with a lot of pain in them, knowing that no... This thing is not right. And you know, we all have conscience. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is not right. But you are, you, 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 you are limited because of how you got there. Do you know that there are business people in this country who finance political parties so that they will determine, after this ministry, the person who goes to there, it is me who have to determine that. Yes, people can lie and say, but I've been in this system for long. I mean, President, I've seen President Kufo, I've seen President Mills, Mel, I've seen President Mahama, yeah, uh, uh, I've seen President Mahama. Mahama. Yeah. And look, people can deny it and say whatever, but I know there are people who say, no, 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 after this person, if he goes there, I won't get my money. I don't mm. want this person there. Okay. Say, oh, won't you be get admission or not? No, 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 if you put it, <laughs> we won't receive our money because mm. after we get, she's too difficult to, to manage. Mm. People who tell, but, but do you see that? But do you see that change? So don't say it is a political class. Okay. It is the citizens. Because as you take money from me, as you take money from Brigitte to vote for her, to do those things, what do you expect? The money she's giving you, the money that you have. So is, that, out, the, is it, what, the state has to make that change? It is this because we have because to get I, to a point where well, financing, you know, so is transparent, open. We know this is my, this is my view. Yeah. First, and I'm sorry to say this at a time that maybe we are in all these difficulties. I believe that Ghana is not due for the presidential system. 
the presidential system mm. requires a very strong parliament. All around the world, where there is presidential system that works, you have a very strong parliament. Consistently, our parliament is weak. Mm -hmm. Because of the weakness of our parliament, it is better with the prime minister system. Because in the case of the prime minister system, all of you go for election, and then the leader becomes the prime minister. Mm -hmm. So it's also just an MP like you. Right. So you don't have one person running a national campaign who mm. requires so much resources. Right. So the tendency for those corruption not that it will be eliminated, but it will be minimized because if I didn't have, if all I need to do is to go and win as well and become the leader mm -hmm. and become so, in, so the, the majority minister, group would do, I guess, I guess. yes, so I there will be I, I, consciously if I want to be firm, it will be easier, okay, as compared to if you are running a national campaign where you have to do up all this money. Look, there are how many pulling agents, uh, pulling agents do political parties pay? Just check, they pay them something that's 200, 100. But multiple agency, and it's expected that one person will have to produce all this. Where is he getting the money from? Because the party people are not paying. They're not paying this. They, all of them expect. I'll give you. I know time is not uh, of good. Look, during this promise, I went to a community. Then uh, an elderly man got up. I said, Honorable, you've done so well. Uh, this school in this community, you built it. You made sure that this road was fixed, that uh, the street lights are there. We have water. We have that. The speed runs that we were complaining, you've gotten it done. This, 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 but I want to ask you a question. All these things that you've done, the MPP in this community, are they also going to benefit from it? I said, why not? <laughs> it's for the state. So we, who have been following you and supporting you all this, what have we got as individuals? Ah, and so they you are, I, I was When he was saying it, I, I was getting mad. Understand. But the applause he received yeah. from the crowd. In other words, that, they are that the same as the majority. Why should we vote for you if MPP is also benefiting from it? Ah, I get it. <laughs> So the people cannot blame the political class because the political class are only responding to the people. To because you see, like I okay. said, then if 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 I decided to fold my arms and tell my friends that look, I don't want any of you to help. I don't want anybody. To look, I just want to go head on. Okay. Maybe I will have lost my promise. Okay. And um, I am coming to you know your own personal scandal uh, at the time. Uh, I it dominated headlines. If I am not. Uh, mistaken, and I'm sure even till this day, people still yeah. mention it. That I mean, for weeks we discussed this. For that uh, for, <laughs> yes, uh, that uh, mm -hmm. uh, Minister of State had wasted state resources, mm -hmm. used state resources to to uh, in personal things, and then you see our president in a private jet. Yeah. Um, um, his appointees mm -hmm. um, have millions, and you are thinking, what exactly that? Well, I mean, because yours me, was about me, twenty thousand dollars. Let me say. Yes. Sometimes I I, I say that. It depends on who you are. Because you, the media, are part of it. Mm. Because I can bet you, when my matter came, if I were rich, that I was too ready to play ball with some oh, media okay. houses. Oh. I don't think the noise would have been that bad. But mm. because I knew, up to date, I keep saying it. I mean, the auditor general the audits of the ministry showed that there was nothing like that. So where did it come from? So it was all an allegation mm. and tried when the when the people had the opportunity. Now come and provide the evidence, the fact because I mean, I don't know if you've ever signed anything to take from a ministry. Mm. Ministry's money <laughs> to get one dime from a ministry, the sheet you sign. And there was nothing like that. But because it was a, an orchestrated thing, it was amplified and amplified till I mean almost everybody's drum uh, ear was uh, was being broken. Even after Shraddha had done all those things. Yeah. But today, what are we saying? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll board a plane and I'll see minister in Ghana's Nanado's presidency in first class. And I say, hey, have we got into this? Because I can bet you, during President Mahama, President Bulls, where I was part of the group, who dare you to be in the first class? Mm. The highest you'll be is in the business class, ministers, what have you. Today, you see some of them flying first class, and nobody seems to be bothered about it. You see individuals go to say that, oh, I'm working from the office of the president, so I've come to build this, and people applaud. Yes, um, um, uh, director of communications has built a police station. Nobody a is police concerned. station. You see people doing all one of them, and nobody. Why? We are certain, because you go to the church, you go to the mosque. I can tell you in the mosque, there's no place for anybody apart from the Imam. Mm. Today, 
depending on how nice you are to that monks, when you are coming, they will reserve a place for you. Mm. It's happening in the church. Meaning that the conscience of our society is accepting it. Mm. Where so I we are grew, becoming more tolerant to corruption. Where I grew up in Ababu, mm. ask anybody who is at least 50 years and above. If you were there and all of a sudden you came down and then rich, my sister Brigitte, you wouldn't get a wife. Nobody would give his daughter to you and her, her mm. hand in marriage. All the questions they've asked, I have, I have 22 sisters from the, my father. Yeah. And I've seen none is married to any rich person. Because my father's concern would be your character, what are you doing, mm. what is your family, how uh, your upbringing. And that would be his concern, not how much you have. Today, is it the same? Maybe if my father was alive today and <laughs> he we had his daughters <laughs> today, maybe he'd be rich. Because I'm a notorious military, I have very pretty sisters. Mm. I mean, because now you just drop with money and everybody. Nobody wants to ask, where is he getting the money from? Everybody says, oh, no, no, he's, he's good. He's a businessman. What business is he doing? No, nobody worries. Oh, you know, they, they, he's... They, 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 well, you're asking too many much, questions. Just how, take how it. How much is the salary of the mm. member of parliament? I'm telling you, not even the Speaker of Parliament takes home 20,000. Mm. Not even the Speaker of Parliament takes home 20,000. You go to your constituency in one week and you spend 20,000. You go to your constituency in one way, you spend 100,000. And nobody is bothered. Where are you getting the money from? And then the same people are complaining that, oh, they are corrupt. What do you expect? Because you are, you are queuing in our homes, you are queuing in our offices, and making demand upon demand upon demand. And nobody wants any excuse. Mm. And you are threatening without those support or without those giving, oh, you will vote. Mm. And the people say, okay. Mm. So, so people have to cut corners to satisfy so you can vote. And now you also are complaining that the people are corrupt. There's something wrong with all of us. So we need to all go back to the drawing table and know that, look, as a member of Parliament for Swansea, I have the common fund that I can use to support the government. Even that has a guideline. I cannot do that to give it to you personally. Let's say your school fees, I can support you to some extent. Maybe there's a flood in your place, I can support you to some extent. The classroom block in your area is roof. Uh, the, 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 it's a wind that has blown off the roof. I can support. There are things that you can do. But where everybody just come, I'm traveling. I wanted to buy me a ticket. Uh, my daughter is sick. I wanted to buy me medication. Today I've been eating. Can you give me this? <laughs> I mean, that kind of thing. And everybody expects that you should be able to do it. Yeah. As we, the MPs, try and the ministers and the government finance, try to do it. You should know that there are consequences, and the consequences are then we are gradually accepting that this is a norm. I mean, believe me, you become a minister, and your own family will call and say, Hey, master, these are 10 more, <laughs> right? Come yeah. for what? Yeah. Well, what, because what? you are also paid salary, yeah. and you hear other ministers say, Oh, you know where I am is uh, Siberia. What do you mean by Siberia? Because there are no procurement, a lot of procurement going on there, but you are paid salary. Mm -hmm. But the minister is going, Oh, meanwhile, they are before there's nothing there, nothing there to do what. If you are put in energy or you put in education, where there are hate find, to come find in, what happens there mm. that you want to be there? And not say without, I mean, maybe chieftaincy or uh, employment, they say, oh, there's nothing there. So what do you expect to be there? There's a procurement opportunity so that you do what? So, so we are living in a society so when where they, uh, we are all like air conditioners and the air conditioner is 2,000, you can say 5,000. We are all living like hostages <laughs> and telling lies and pretending. Mm. The moment an opportunity, no, you become the minister, bring it. You, 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 all your friends. Hey, you see, the you have to change this to your dress. This shoe, you can't longer wear, you are not the minister. Hey, this, this is your watch. Hey, you have to change it. Now you are the minister. The, the, the own cycle will be pushing you to do things beyond your salary. And they accept it when they now see you driving Porsche car, they now see you change your wardrobe. They, they accept that mm. without yeah. questioning. That you are, you are is not... your salary able to do that? Mm. We are accepting it. So, as we accept it, that's the consequences that we are saying. And let me say this lastly on this corruption thing. You see, if I have one million Ghana cities and I enter as one thing, and I just take any single community, let's say they don't have water, I can draw two boreholes, maybe at 40,000 for them. I can build a classroom, maybe six classroom block for them, maybe at 700,000. 
I can probably uh, support eye screening or right, right. medical screening for that community for a week. But if I decide to share that money to that community and I target only 1,000 people in that community, none of mm. them will get more than 1,000 cents. Yeah. On the money within it. That's the yeah. consequence of corruption. Because yeah. it is black people who are doing it. The effect is so massive. The amount of money involved, what it can do, that we are not doing it and it's just in people's pocket, that they will just go and flash it in two, three days in the WC. It's mind blowing. On hindsight, uh, would you say they were fair to Victoria Hammer for dreaming or thinking about making a million dollars? Or, or such examples are good for our democracy, even though they, right now they, we they, can't say if, what is if happening. If that could happen to her, and now we are hearing these stories of trying to uh, clean it up and this and that, mm -hmm. you say that there was no, that was not fair. Well, the, okay. this, the Ghanaian society was not fair. Not the to, government. To uh, Victoria Hammer. Right. So but then if it means, one, it means if one that government upon even thinking mm. you could lose your job mm. and another is not thinking it's You've real done it. and now they're they they trying to mm. find excuse around then the one that was just thinking and got that level of punish, that punish was so harsh then right but the right thing was what was done okay and that's sort of escalated into doing even a more right thing now right. but the way we are making it look it looks like I'm, so, I'm sorry to say that even the future NDC government will be struggling. Mm. Because, you see, you know, this game is like a, 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 a football. Now, if, let's say, by the grace of God, it's as Muhammad comes in 2025, and any member of his government tries to do, say, like, the tinkle of hammer, and he wants to punish him, mm. how will the NDC people say, ah! Why Even when MDP had this, they didn't do it, now you want to do this again. Ah. No, I, I want to put... I get it. Pressure. The next government, it is more difficult because they say that look at like what they did this, they got away with it, they, mm. they got away with it, all this they, they've gotten away with it. Mm. Now you this one, this peanut, you want to no, you are not being fair to mm. us. We are all Ghanaians. Mm. You know, that kind so of the president thing. will be under a lot of pressure, lot of pressure. even from his own members. Right. Okay. Because of the way these people are doing right. uh, Unfortunately, we are uh, like two minutes uh, to wrap up. I want to talk about 2024 elections yeah. and your role, mm. how key, you know, Asawasi or the Ashanti region is yeah. to the NDC in reducing the deficits yeah. uh, in Ashanti region. I've heard the former president say that we know they rig the elections mm. in the Ashanti region. We have seen what they do mm. and they will match them this time around. One, what do they do and how is N NDC going to Well, let me, let me say that as one says the heartbeat of uh, the NDC in mm. the Ashanti region. And uh, I've always said, if we could get all our constituencies, the 46 others, to do half of what Aswansi does, we are going to achieve Three things. Okay. One, we are going to reduce the massive uh, vote uh, uh, stealing. Mm -hmm. Two, we are going to get the upgrade figures for even NDC itself. Right. And three, believe me, this large volume of vote that shows from our region will definitely reduce drastically. Mm -hmm. But the challenge we have is that, you see, I have told my party a time again and again, and I'm seeing that some steps have been taken. I said that. You cannot put 47 constituencies in the lion's den to the same regional executives to manage with little resources. Because when you are sharing resources, they will share it. Oh, Oti region, Asante region, we have one pick up, one pick up, come and take. Oti region is only eight constituencies. As, uh, Asante region is 47. Hmm. You have Volta region. Oh, Volta region is a backbone. It's true, it's a backbone of ND because if you check per, per capita, they vote the highest hmm. for NDC. Hmm. But Asante region has 47 consensus. Gota region has 18. Mm. I get you. So I get if you don't, so, and because these people are in the lion's den, they even mm. require more resources because mm. policing and doing all those things in the lion's den is more difficult mm. than where it is largely your supporters. Mm. So we need to look at resource movement and our strategy. Obviously, you can't sit on TV and, and, sing. Do, right, and, and right. talk about it. But these are the areas, and I keep saying that if everybody will do half of what we do in Aswansi, the region will just get the change. I hope I've seen that we are clustering now into eight mm. to see whether we can manage it as a smaller unit. No matter how you do, if you don't put efficiency and effectiveness and enough resources, believe me, it will be about the same thing. All right. But what would be your, your role in, in that, in ensuring that? So are you putting forward, you know, that these are the things that you need yeah, in the yeah, constituency? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and I'm, your, your... I'm, 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 I'm in a cluster, obviously. Okay. Someone like me will take over 
the whole of my cluster. Right, right. I mean, I have the way we have our sitting MPs. Naturally, mm. that's what I always do. Okay. I support those places mm. to make sure that we uh, improve our, our performance. And then where we think that it is marginal, there's a possibility we we will focus on like the last time New York has slipped our hands. Mm. I spent a lot of yeah. days in New York Biasa to get it back. I mean, Tepa is a doable, so we may have to spend more time there mm. from as well. We will go with our team okay. to help. So we will continue to do that to make sure right. that we improve the lots of the region. All right. Because our council alone winning cannot get us to win the presidential. We need to use whatever strength we have to let it have effect on the other consensus that we can. Obviously, we don't have the resources to be able to cover the 47. But that would mean, like mm. my people say, what you cannot do or you don't live off. So we will do the mm -hmm. bit that we've been doing and probably try to see if we can scale it up a little to ensure that our performance in the region improves. Right. I want to say a very big thank you to you, uh, Member of Parliament for Aswasi Constituency, Alhaji Mohammed Mubarak Muntaka, uh, for spending time with us and sharing your experience with us. Uh, he didn't give us the tips as to how you know, he's been able to win the constituency <laughs> over and over again. But I hope that uh, you also go on social media, share your thoughts with us, use the hashtag one-on-one. -on -one. My name is Bridget Otu. We're back next week.